G'day guys, today we're going to run you through how to use the dry dual clutch tools to suit the Ford Power Shift transmission. This transmission is commonly found in Ford Focus and Ford Fiesta in all types of markets around the world. These tools are available through both our high tool program and for purchase and this video will show you how to most effectively use those tools uh, to make sure you do the job right the first time. First thing we're going to do is use the provided bungs in the kit and we're going to put them into the dry shaft holes to stop fluid leaking out. The next step is we're going to rotate the transmission up onto its side and we're going to use the support arm that's provided in the kit to actually stabilise it. The next step is to remove the two clutch actuators that are located on the side of the transmission here and what we've done is indexed them number two and number one just so that we don't mix them up for reassembly. The next step is we've got to remove this top hub here. So in order to do that, we're going to use two flat blade screwdrivers and we're just going to pry this small circlip here out. The next step is to remove the circlip that's holding this main bearing on this main input shaft. It's best to use the circlip pliers that are provided in the kit because they're perfectly shaped to actually remove that clip. You can use other pliers, but it can be difficult to remove the clip. One little trick that might help remove that circlip is to actually just give the circlip and bearing a small tap with a nylon mallet and the mandrel um, used to actually install the bearing. If you just give that a little tap, that'll just help you loosen that clip before you actually use the pliers on it. The next part you're gonna do is select the correct pattern for your transmission. Uh, there's two different patterns uh, and two different transmission types. There is a guide on which one suits what, otherwise just follow whether it has the starter motor pocket or not. You're gonna install that over the studs that are in the actual clutch itself. And you'll see that the holes, these little vent holes here, line up with those holes there. Um, and you should have these rivets exposed when it's installed. We're gonna select the correct uh, hooks and spring clips to suit the pattern that we've got there. As you can see, these are marked one, one, and two, and the corresponding numbers are also on the hooks here. Next, you're gonna grab one of your number one hooks and slide that in and hook it over where the rivet sits there. Next, you can do the, the other number one. And finally, the number two, which has a slightly different shape to it. We'll hook that in where it can sit. The next step is to install uh, this pulling mandrel, which will go over the smaller input shaft and actually press on the big input shaft. Next, we're going to install the pulling mandrel here. Um, and a little tip is if you extend the thread a small amount, it'll help you line it up onto the clips here so it becomes a little bit less fiddly. And then once we've got that roughly in place, we can start to install the threads to help guide it. Once we have all of that true and square, it might help to just give these bolts here a little bit of a tighten to help stop them rotating as we try and pull the clutch out. And finally, what we're gonna do is we're going to tighten this up, which is gonna press down on the big input shaft and pull the clutch 
off of the input shaft. Once you feel like it's free, you can just lift it straight out. Next, we can remove the little bearing plates from the top of the thrust bearings and we'll be able to actually just lift that thrust bearing out by itself. We can then remove these four Torx bolts that are there to support the forks. Then there's another four Torx bolts at the back that are supporting the fork mechanisms as well. Then you can just lift these two forks out. The last part of disassembly we need to do here is to remove this guide tube by just removing these three bolts holding it in place. Now that we've done all the disassembly work, what we want to do is visually inspect the two seals that are part of the input shafts here. The first one's the big one that's on the outside here, um, and the second one is the one that's in between these two input shafts. It's important that you do check uh, right inside there with a torch to make sure that's not leaking. And the same with this one, if they are leaking, you're gonna to wanna to replace them. The last thing you want is them leaking out transmission fluid onto the clutches and causing them to shudder or slip. Next, we're gonna clean out the bell housing and make sure we get rid of any of the old clutch debris. We don't want any of that in there floating around and contaminating the new clutch. The next thing we wanna check here is to make sure that all these surfaces are nice and flat so that the forks um, and the sliders and everything are not gonna be rolling over anything that's rough. So I'm just using some emery paper to just quickly clean them off and get rid of any debris that could be stuck on there. Now we can install our new guide tube back into place. It locates via the little tab there. And then next we're going to reinstall the bolts to hold that guide tube in. And what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna put a small amount of thread retaining compound on them and then we'll torque them up. We're gonna to torque these three bolts up to eight Newton meters. Next, we're gonna install the new clutch forks very carefully, but first we need to double check that the locating dowels for the forks are actually in the bell housing in their correct positions. They can come out when you remove the old forks. The narrower fork is gonna be installed first. Followed by the wider fork. We're going to reinstall the M8 bolts that hold those forks in, and we're just going to thread lock them and torque them to 19 Newton meters. The next step is we're going to remove these retaining clips. They are just in place to prevent the forks from being damaged during transport and packing. So all we need to do is just press onto the little sides of them and we can actually lift them out. Next, we're going to temporarily install the actuators and we're just gonna put them in there and seat them in place so that it sits flush. We don't need to put the bolts in, we just need these to sit in place temporarily uh, while we do some further assembly work. Next, we're going to install the bearings. These are actually indexed to the nose cone, so it only fits in one orientation. There's a little tab on the nose cone that corresponds to the inner diameter of the bearing there. So once you put it on, 
you can just rotate it until it clicks into place and double check that it is contacting in the correct spots on the fork. Next, we're going to install these counter springs, but what we need to do first is check that the middle four digits on the spring here match the last four digits on the corresponding fork. On this particular clutch fork, it has the number ending in 1573, and on the counter spring, you can see the middle number is 1573 also. And finally, we're gonna torque these bolts to 26 Newton meters. Final step here, we're going to align the small marks to the pivots on the actual forks. And in the kit is a special tool for doing that. And we can just rotate it anyway to make them align perfectly. Then we can install the bearing plates. Just make sure you put them in the right orientation. There is a locating ring for the large one and it'll slip into place and a locating ring for the small one which will also slip into place. Before we install the clutch, we're going to apply a small amount of high temperature bearing grease to both of the input shafts. You only need a small amount and we're gonna just wipe off any excess at the end to make sure that it can't beat up and then spray out onto the friction surfaces. It's also a good idea to put a very small amount on the bearing press surface there. That'll just help reduce the amount of force required to actually press that bearing on if it is a firmer fit. In the kit there's two lifting handles and you can just screw them onto the studs in the clutch to help you lift it into the transmission. We're going to lift the clutch in and just carefully place it over the input shaft and the spline should line up. Just to double check that the bottom spline is actually properly engaged before we start pressing the clutch in. We're gonna use a vernier and we're just gonna measure down from the bearing face to the input shaft and check that that's not more than seven millimeters. If it is more than seven millimeters, you may need to remove the clutch and reinstall it to make sure that that spline is aligned. Now we can remove the handles from here and we're going to install the press mandrel over the input shaft with a little sight hole on the side and the pressing piece and these lugs can actually be installed on the transmission before we press it all down. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna use the press on top of the transmission here to actually press down on the bearing race. What that'll do is it'll press the entire clutch down onto that input shaft. And in order to do that, we've set our torque wrench to nine Newton meters to make sure that we don't exceed um, that amount of force where we're either at the end of the bearing race and the clutch is in position, or we're potentially crushing something that we shouldn't be crushing. Now that this is pressed all the way down, we can see the circlip groove in there, and that's gonna be our next step to actually install the circlip. Next, we're gonna install the new circlip to hold the clutch on the shaft there. It's important to note that these circlips do have a correct orientation, which is determined by the groove here. It has a, a taper to it and you want to make sure that the narrow part is facing upwards. 
and I'm just gonna use a flathead screwdriver to make sure that that circlip is properly seated in there. Next, we're going to install the small hub and there is a laser marked index line which we'll need to line up. So if we slide that on, we should be able to rotate the clutch to the point where that will actually line up and engage. To secure that in place, we'll install the larger circlip and it's important to check that that circlip is seated back against the clutch so that it can't pop out during operation. So one of the final steps here is to preset the clutch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the actuators that we temporarily installed. And we're going to use this special winding tool that has been provided that also has a laser mark on it. And what we're gonna do is install that into the back of the fork here. I'm gonna rotate it anti-clockwise. It won't take anywhere more than 12 full rotations and you'll hear a clicking noise which will actually reset the clutch and it'll actually remove the locking mechanism that's holding the diaphragm for transport. Once you've heard the clicking noise, slowly release the tool as it'll wind back and then you can remove it and do the exact same thing on the other actuator. The last step is to reinstall the actuators. Before we do that, we're just going to apply a small amount of grease to the spline that's in there, just so it doesn't jam. When we go to reinstall the actuators, we want to check that we're putting the one that we've marked one in the hole that we've marked one. The one that we marked two, the hole that we marked two. Now that the new clutch and actuation system is installed in the transmission, you can carefully install the transmission into the vehicle and test drive it. It can take a period of time for the clutches to actually bed in, and then not only that, for the vehicle to relearn the friction points, and then it'll start to drive a lot smoother.